Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and it is day, I don't know, 6,742 of um, physical distancing, uh, isolation, those sorts of things. Uh, everyone's on a different day because every state indicated that we needed to stay at home and gave that mandatory stay at home order at a different time. So I honestly have no idea what day it is. <laughs> or No, it's Tuesday. I know it's Tuesday because there's a book interview and um, thank goodness for the podcast. It keeps me at least somewhat on track. But uh, I hope you had a good weekend regardless of having to most likely stay home. My hubby and I had a date, sort of. Um, we, we didn't go anywhere, but we, um, had dinner. We sat on the couch and ate dinner and watched the first episode of Star Trek Picard. You know, it wasn't much, but it was lovely. <laughs> and, um, you do what you can in these times. I was gonna make him dr- get dressed and, and wear a tie, but he hadn't had the best day, so I didn't make him wear a tie. My mom said he should have just made him wear a tie with his t-shirt, but maybe next time. Anyway. Book interview, author interview. I am speaking today to Armana Forbes, who is the author of Dead Remnants. That's the book that we are talking about today. It is her debut novel. After our interview this weekend, I went into my, uh, where my husband was in the other room and I said, yeah, you know, so I was just chatting with Scotland. Um, I love that I can do international uh, interviews because of the lovely joys of technology these days. So Armarna grew up here in the States, but she now lives in Scotland. Uh, the book, again, is called Dead Remnants. Uh, Welcome to the Afterlife of Denver, where phantom buffalo roam and ghost factions wage war. 17-year-old Ashen Deming is dead, but she can't move on. Not with the soul of her best friend on the line. He is stuck in a horrific curse, a curse no spirit knows how to break. Ashen is determined to find a cure, but at every turn, opposing factions try to snatch her for themselves. As the menacing specters close in, a new threat is exposed, one that looms over the dead and the living, and Ashen and her posse of ghosts have one brief chance to stop them. If they fail, the entire world will be lost to darkness forever. But Ashen's time is running out. If she doesn't cross over soon, she will be damned to roam the haunted city for eternity. So this is the afterlife in Denver, which is not something that you uh, hear very often. (laughs) I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Denver. Uh, It's just not a sentence that uh, I say very often in regular regular conversations. This is uh, obviously... Got some fantasy. It's got a little maybe science fiction in it. It's more fantasy, I'd say. But, um, Ashen is a 17 year old, newly dead young woman who finds herself in an afterlife she probably wasn't expecting. Uh, There are, it's an afterlife I'm certainly, I, I certainly hadn't had a picture of in my head. I mean, there's all of these opposing factors fighting for supremacy in the afterlife. There are, and, and I, I like that the, there are, two factions there's the light and the unseen and they're there so one's the light and one's uh they're they're a darker shadowy color but you cannot just assume that they are good or bad because of the colors of their their essences the setting might be the old west but you can't go by um western movies where the good guys wear white hats and the bad guys wear black hats and i appreciate that because everybody has a little uh, bit of gray in them amongst the three factions that are trying to kind of gain dominance in this afterlife so let's go ahead and turn now to the interview with armarna so she can tell you more about her inspiration behind the book and more just more about the story in general 
And I do have copies of this book to give away, so stay tuned until the end to find out how you can win a copy of Dead Remnants by Armarna Forbes. Armarna, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I am very excited to have you here to talk about your new book. It is called Dead Remnants. Um, it is really good. Uh, before we get to the book, though, let's talk a little bit about you. If you could share just a bit about yourself so my listeners can get to know you, that would be great. Uh, well, I was raised pretty much in what uh, remains of the Old West. So growing up, I'd go gold panning with my grandparents, and they knew people like Butch Cassidy's sister. I have a book from her, actually. Um uh, signed to my grandmother saying, uh, to the nicest lady I know and stuff. So they, they knew like a lot of old timers and things. So I kind of grew up in a kind of unique circumstance. Um, used to, <laughs> used to play in old, um, like abandoned mine shafts, <laughs> somewhat dangerous things like that. It sounds dangerous, um, yeah. But I never knew it was really all that unique until much later in life. And then I realized that that's not really something that even kids in America necessarily know of anymore. You know, it's not a, a typical upbringing. And so, uh, yeah, so, um, I kind of base my writing off of that, I guess. Okay. Um, and now you live in Scotland with your husband? I do. Um, my husband is Scottish. Uh, so I moved here four years ago. And, um, still getting acclimated to, to the difference in culture. Uh, for the most part, it's very similar. Um, but every once in a while, when it's a little bit different, it kind of throws me a bit. Um, that's happening right. less frequently, but it still happens on occasion. Um, sure. yeah. but yeah, it's, uh, I live in Edinburgh, which is a beautiful city. Um, and I would encourage people to come visit if they ever are able to. If we can ever leave our houses again. If yes. we can ever, if we can ever uh, leave our houses, yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. So let's talk about the book again. It's called Dead Remnants. Can you give an overview of the story? Um, it is about a teenager who dies. Um, that's not a spoiler. That happens right at the start. Um, and the book follows her uh, in basically what is the old west a afterlife of Denver, Colorado. Um, where she comes across a lot of ghost factions that are warring and uh while she's trying to find her friend who is who has uh become missing after after her death basically um so it's basically it's a, a found family ish uh fantasy with some historical aspects thrown into there i love trying to explain books like this because no matter how you explain them, they always come across sounding a little bit weird, which is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, Multi-genre, uh, kind of, yeah. Yeah. Um, so what was your initial inspiration for the story? I've always had a fascination with um, kind of ghosts in the afterlife and that sort of thing. Not necessarily that I, I necessarily agree with it or believe in it, but I've always thought it was really, really interesting. Um, so years ago, like 10 years ago, I started thinking, uh, well, what if each type of ghost that people see have certain, there's a reason for it, or they have certain abilities or whatever. Um, so that's kind of where the ghost faction idea started. And the very first character I came up with was Macasia, the, the old dead cowboy, um, in the book. And don't he call him of, a cowboy. <laughs> don't call him a cowboy. This is true. Uh, that was considered rude back in the day. Uh, <laughs> uh, he, um, was a very strong character right off the bat. And, um, I always joke around. I said, he kind of would always talk to me all the time in my head and be like, write this, write this, write this. And I kept kind of putting off the book for a long while. I'd start to write it, didn't feel ready to write it, put it away for a few years and then rewrite it again. And it wasn't until about three years ago. I actually sat and wrote it um, and then worked on editing it uh, for ages. It feels like a year and a half or so. Um, but yeah, so that, that kind of started it. And that was right when there was the Harry Potter 
craze at the time. And I kind of wanted to create something that was much more Americana, but still had kind of its own mythos and its own um, fantasy because we don't have a lot of that in America, maybe because we have a shorter history. Um, at least white culture, America has a shorter history, not necessarily native American culture. Um, and I kind of want to do something along the veins of the wizard of Oz, you know, that's kind of just kind of very strictly kind of more Americana kind of tale. Um, so that's, that's kind of how it initially started and it just kind of warped itself from there, I guess. We are going to take our first break of the podcast. When we come back, Armarno will be talking a little bit more about the setting of the Wild West and of Denver as the afterlife. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Do you want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do? All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking with Armarna Forbes about her debut novel, Dead Remnants. We've been talking about the book, the setting of the afterlife, and um, we're going to continue talking a little bit more about that setting. And so from things that you've said, uh, I, you've kind of answered my question, but my one of my questions or just um, curiosities about the book was, okay, it's the afterlife, but it's the afterlife in the old west and in denver so why yeah. you know why those two particular settings for the afterlife well i mean there was a lot of old west things in denver um so uh i think if i remember correctly was it wild bill that's shoot i don't remember there's someone that's buried just just kind of as you go up the up the pass there and there's a lot of references to doc holiday doc holiday died uh, where he actually finally, uh, died from consumption was, uh, there in, in Denver, uh, or just outside of Denver, I think. Um, and some of these facts might be a little bit muddled. It's just kind of what I remember off the top of my head, but, uh, it has a lot of that, that flavor still, um, like the first forts and, and all that kind of thing. So I, I liked that aspect a lot. I mean, I didn't go full on. West, which is where I, I pretty much was, I was born more and raised more in California and parts of Oregon and things like that. Um, but, uh, I don't know, Colorado has kind of a certain grit to it. And so anyway, so I, I moved there from Alaska. I lived in Alaska for a time and I moved to Colorado and was there for about 10 years. And I thought it'd be an interesting setting for a fantasy. So. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's talk a bit more. Uh, you've mentioned one of the characters, Macasia, but let's talk a bit more about the main character, Ashen. Um, what about her do you think will resonate with readers? I think her foolishness and her loyalty probably would most, um, I think in a way that, that, I think I wrote this for young adults and from the feedback I've gotten, they do relate to her, especially on, on being just completely lost sometimes. And so when she dies in the book, obviously she goes through a period of, of grief. Um, and I think maybe that's what makes her most relatable is that we've all kind of gone through some sort of grief at some point and we all know that we're going to die so it's it's something that we can grasp onto, I guess. 
And one thing that I liked about Ashton, I mean, I, there, there are several things that I liked about her. I mean, she was very easy to relate to because she is kind of just thrown into the situation. Um, she sounds weird because she dies, but she, she, she enters the situation. She has no idea what's going on, but um, your description of her is, you don't really describe her except that she has kind of um, curly, uh, unruly hair and, and brown eyes. So for me, I feel like she could be um, she could be a white, a young white woman. She could be a young person of color. Yeah. Did you do that intentionally yeah. or is that just kind of, is that <laughs> me really projecting? No, that's, that's correct. I'm really glad that you caught that. Um, she, she does have freckles. Um, she has curly hair, brown eyes brown brown hair and that's kind of as much and her red converse shoes that's pretty much it um basically the way i think of ashen i wanted her to be nondescript to a, to a degree so that no matter who's reading it they could project themselves in a way into that character um but in my mind she's she is probably a person of color or mixed race because when i think of america i think of people of many cultures and I mean, all of us are a quarter of something or an eighth of something or, a, you know, we're, we're all such a mix. And I wanted Ashton to kind of represent that in a way and kind of represent America in a certain way. So in my mind, she's always been kind of a mix of several things. Um, so that's I did that on purpose. So, and yeah, I'm glad that you caught that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I love that because representation is so important and um, a young women of color or of um you know, it, it, it's great for young women to see themselves in books yeah. like this and to be the heroine in a book like this. Um, <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> um, what do you hope that readers might take away from the book? I would hope they wouldn't be so, no matter what your beliefs are, um, I'd I'd hope that they would find some comfort in the book, I guess. Um, you know, you might believe in a, in a higher power or if you're more like me, I, I don't. Um, I'm kind of a, of the thought process is if when we, when we die, we're, 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 we're dead. Um, and I don't think that's bad. Um, and I think there's a lot of fear about it, but I, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. Just as long as you live your life to, to, the fullest to, to your most potential. And in a way, Ashen didn't do that until after she had died. Um, she didn't have that opportunity necessarily. So I don't know. I, I would hope people find it a satisfying read that makes them feel a bit better about possibly things ending, I guess, in a way. And at the same time, maybe rethink how in American history, how we've not always been the, the good guys and maybe try and fix that. Um, because a lot of the historical vignettes that I have in the, in the book tackle some of the really uglier parts of our history. Um, and I think I, I want, I wanted to shed, um, light on some of these things so that maybe it might open someone else's eyes that, things tend to always repeat themselves. Um, and hopefully we could stop the cycle, I guess. Mm -hmm. Let, let's talk a little bit more about the, the vignettes. Um, so it is partially historical fiction because you do have um, scenes from different time periods. Can you talk a little bit about, and, and those are from the, some of the other characters lives before they, you know, entered the afterlife. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you chose which characters and scenes to include? Well, I did each of the main characters other than, well, you see Ashens um, as you read the book, but uh, I did each of the, the main characters in her posse. Uh, all of them, except for one, dies in Colorado from, from one reason or another. Um, and I, I specifically focused a lot on a lot of Native American um, horrible things that happened Native, to Native Americans during during that time. Um, so one of them was uh, the Sand Creek Massacre, um, 
which happened in Colorado. And another was a trail of tears. And I really wanted to really make those very vivid. And the reason being is because I had recently read, um, an article about how uh, some of these things are being taught in schools now where they talk about, say, the Trail of Tears and they make it out like, uh, oh, they chose to leave. Uh, they weren't forced off their lands. They chose to leave, which is not true. It's right. If anything, it's a bit of a. It's a, it has a truth to it, meaning that initially some of the people left because they were kind of being forced to leave. So they said, okay, fine, we'll leave. And then the rest got forced off. So they're kind of saying, oh yeah, but they chose to leave because that first group chose to leave. No, that's not what really happened. Uh, and that the people got put in concentration camps and other things that are just really horrible. And no one talks much about those pieces a little bit. And maybe because I was raised white, but I'm part Native American. Um, and I feel like... Uh, I kind of owe it a little bit to, to get some of that story out and make it more relatable and, and make it more, um, impactful to someone who's reading it to be like, Oh wow. We, we were really, really horrible. Like we were horrible to other people and America isn't always the good guys, you know? So, Mm -hmm. Mm yeah. Time for our second break of the podcast. When we come back, we'll be talking more about the historical fiction aspects of the book. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast Podcast itch, whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. GSMC Book Review Podcast. Before the break, Armarna was speaking of some of the historical fiction aspects of the book, of some of those settings, and what readers can learn from those different vignettes. So let's go ahead and jump back into that conversation. And it can be um, sometimes easier to relate for younger people to read it in a, a book like this where it's more personal rather than, you know, in a lecture or in a textbook. Yeah, and that's and that's kind of I was I, well, I was wanting to teach kids about history without them knowing they're learning about history. Uh, so, particularly when it comes to Angry Fox, I, I feel that she's probably the most relatable of them, um, especially as she's kind of going between two because she's half Cherokee and she's half white. Um, that she's feeling kind of por- torn between two cultures, um, and I feel like a lot of kids go through that. Um, and on top of it, she's thrown into a horrible, horrible situation. So, yeah, so I was hoping that it's something that people, yes, it'll make you uncomfortable to read it, but hopefully you get something out of it at the same time. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So then um, what kind of research did you do for the book? Oh, man. Um, so the World War II stuff was was easier. There was a lot more... Uh, information to go off of. So as Max, as it it happens on D-Day, and as the character Max is heading to the shore, everything that he sees and everything that he hears 
actually happen. So I had written down a timeline to figure out exactly when he would have seen things, when he would have heard certain things, um, to try and get that as accurate as possible without making it like a textbook, I guess. Um, when it came to a lot of the Native American stuff, that was very difficult to find information on. Um, I utilized uh, some online stuff like the, the Cheyenne have um, an online dictionary uh, of language and, and other things. So I, I tried to make it as, as correct as possible. Um, and I've reached out to other Native American friends as well. I had, I had people, um, you know, sympathy read it for me. Uh, some black friends who read the lynching scene, there's a lynching scene in it. Um, so I, I, I did my very, very best. And on top of that, with Macasia's unique speaking, um, I actually created a, uh, what I call my cowboy dictionary. And it's just lines and lines and lines and lines of words, phrases, things from the late 1800s that he would be using. Uh, and I also did research on Appalachian the way that uh, the Appalachian language sounds and everything, especially at that time for some of the villains that are actually, actually Appalachian. So yeah, I, I, I did a lot of research on it. But a lot of really interesting research. Some of it pretty fun, I would think. I really like research, to be honest. I, I'd probably yeah. do more research than writing. I'd probably do more research than writing, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> um, nice like between documentaries and, and just whatever else I could, I could find. So like with uh, the Sand Creek massacre one, pretty much history has been scrubbed of a lot of that information other than what was passed down with the Cheyenne um, from word of mouth, but from the survivors and there weren't many. Um, so I tried my best to put um, as much of those stories that I could actually find kind of in there. So there's, there's at one point where a girl is holding her face. I won't, I won't get into t to it too much, but she sees a girl holding her face. And that was something specifically that, that someone saw uh, on that day. Um, mm, so I, yeah, that was hard I to tried read. To pay, yeah. I tried to pay tribute as much as I could um, to those people's stories since it's, it's their story, I guess. So I treated each of those more like a historical writing rather than, uh, necessarily something from my point of view, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I want to touch back on something that you said earlier about um, a found family uh, in this story, and Ashen really does kind of find her family. Um, can you talk a bit more about that concept and how um, how and its importance to the storyline? Well, Ashen doesn't have the best upbringing. Um, and so when she dies, she, um, she feels a little bit even more alone. And the only person that she has to rely on is her best friend, Jacob, who at that point is missing. So it was important to me for her to find what she felt she's, she's missed her entire life. Even if that means it's in the afterlife. Um, so between, I, I wrote it so that as you read it, you weren't sure exactly who was good and who was bad as you go along. You don't know who's a good guy and who's a bad guy. Uh, mm -hmm. One guy is obvious that he's a bad guy, but you know, for the most part, you're not sure. Everyone has a little bit of gray. Even the good guys have a bit of gray. Um, but I still wanted her to find that connection, especially kind of like a mother father figure, which I think she finds with, um, Acacia and Vanna in particular, they they kind of become her, her watchers, I guess, in a way. Um, so yes, yeah, so I, I felt it was important that she, she found that as at least at some point, even if she didn't have it in life, that she found it afterward. Mm -hmm. Are there, um, any particular autobiographical elements within the book? I mean, there's um, obviously there's the setting to some extent. <sighs> I would say probably the one that's most like me as, as a person would probably be Angry Fox, but it's not based off of me. It's not really based off of anybody. Um, there are aspects of things that are kind of based off, like how Macasia calls her Little Missy. My grandpa used to call me Little Missy. 
Um, and then Vanna says a couple of things that my grandmother says. So I, I kind of did little kind of Easter eggs for myself in there, kind of. Um, but for the most part, there, there's not too much, um, settings maybe, um, like the, the dream sequences with the, um, mind shafts and things are directly from my childhood kind of thing. Like that's how, well, without the dead people in them, uh, <laughs> <I hope>. oh. <laughs> uh, but the, the actual look of the, look of the mind shaft and all that kind of thing, like that's more from my childhood and there's aspects like that through it. Um, but mostly I have Easter eggs in there. Like the reason Langhorn is named Langhorn is because I really like Mark Twain. Um, and I have a corpse at one point with a toe tag and it says Romero because I like George Romero. So little things like that, but nothing specifically, uh, copied from life, I guess. Okay. Thank you. Um, are you working on anything new now? Um, it's been a bit slow. Um, but I, I started one about a year and a half ago and I haven't written much of it yet. Um, also kind of a weird, it's, it's a weird West, old West fantasy, but a retelling of the Wizard of Oz. Um, and it's, uh, my elevator pitch on it is, a body snatching of fox god steals the wrong suit. Um, <laughs> so it's unique. Okay. It's, uh, it's more of a journey one, so it's not as much of a mystery. Like this one was a lot more, you know, a, a mystery basically. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot more seating had to be done in it. Uh, this one's a little easier that way, but I don't know if I'm interested in re writing it right now. So I, I've kind of started to write on a, um a Scottish old West dystopian monster thing fantasy. Oh, so that combines several things. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I've not decided yet, but I know I want it to be like in the future. Um, and it's going to have a lot of old West elements and Scottish elements because here I'm living in Scotland and I wanted to combine the two. Uh, right. so well, yeah, so it's going to be kind of a weird mash of, of things. I think it'll work. Uh, I, I'll, I'll see as I start to write it out more right now. I've just been kind of storyboarding it a little bit, but, um, not actually started to write much of it. I mean, if Firefly can do old West and Chinese, and exactly. space, I don't see why you thought. can't yeah. do. <laughs> yeah. And I'm a really big fan of Joss Whedon. So, uh, I, I normally tell people if, if they like Joss Whedon, they'll probably like Dead Remnants or things I write because I have kind of that same sort of humor. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. So, if I mean, if Joss Whedon can do it, then, yeah, I could totally yeah. make that work. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Time for our last break. So when we come back, Armana will be speaking about how she came to write her debut novel. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast. Time to hashtag everything. We talk about all the fun, crazy stories on social media. From Instagram to Facebook, Twitter to Tumblr, or probably even Friendster. Join us each week as we explore the quirky side of social media. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast. It's simple, it's simple, such a sad song. The one that Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. Before the break, we were talking about Firefly and mashups and um, why you can't do Scottish Old West, because why not? So let's go ahead and get back to the interview. In terms of writing, is it something that you've always wanted to do, or is it something that you started uh, later in life? How did that work for you? I never thought of it as a main job. I always did it 
on the side. So like, as I was growing up, I pretty much wanted to be a female Indiana Jones, uh, for a long time. Um, and that changed to like an oceanographer at one point. And, you know, it was constantly kind of changing, but I always wrote, I always wrote stories and little novels and things. Um, it wasn't until much later in life that I realized I think I kind of actually want to do this as a, as a thing. Um, and so I started with more horror short stories, um, and then started to get more into longer pieces. And I'm finding I actually prefer writing longer, like novel pieces than short stories now. So, um, yeah. Okay. And so out of, uh, your past that led you to your first novel, um, do you have advice for aspiring authors? Ooh, um, no idea is too silly. So one of the main things I always see on Twitter and stuff is like, I have this idea, but it just is, it sounds lame. And I don't think there's such a thing. I mean, if you, if you boil everything down to the basics, it sounds pretty silly. So uh, a guy that has knives coming out of his knuckles and he kills people, Wolverine. I mean, if you, if you just boil it straight down, it just sounds ridiculous. So I would tell people not to, not to worry about if it sounds silly. If you like it and you want to write it, then you should write it. Um, and not worry too much about what others may think. Um, in a way you want to write for your audience, but mainly you want to write it as if it were something that you wanted to pick up in a store or read yourself. Um, so that would be my biggest thing that I would, I would say just write. Just write whatever your heart is telling you to write. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, I completely agree. Because think about your favorite sort of either fantasy or sci-fi or, or those types of shows or books. And when you try to explain them to someone, <laughs> they often yeah. look at you like you are nuts. Yeah, um, and you're like, well, you just have to watch it because it's really good. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, when you then take time to read for yourself, do you have favorite authors uh, or genres? Uh, always horror. Um, I've loved, I've loved that since I was little. Um, I started reading King and Edgar Allan Poe in third grade. Uh, and any, any of those like scary book series that I could get my hands on when I was little. Um, so I still enjoy reading that kind of thing, but I've actually gotten a little bit more into fantasy, which I wasn't actually so much into fantasy before. Uh, and sci-fi and things like that. Uh, but so my, my main favorites would be like Neil Gaiman, uh, Stephen King, because I pretty much grew up reading his stuff. Uh, Shirley Jackson, Richard Matheson is one of my all-time favorites. Um, and I Am Legend is probably my all-time favorite novel slash novella. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll read anything. Anything like that. All right. Thank you for that. I know you have um, a website. So if you can tell people uh, the w how to find your website as well as where they could find you on social media. Yeah, sure. So it's a, it's a matter of spelling my name properly. So <laughs> that'll be fun. Uh, so my website is uh, armarnaforbes.com. So that's um, A-R-M-A-R-N-A. Forbes.com. My Twitter handle is at Armana Forbes. Um, very easy to find if you just Google me. Um, yeah, I, I believe I even have a Facebook page, but I don't update it very much. So if you ever want to follow and look at Twitter updates, um, that'd probably be the best way. Um, yeah. All right, perfect. Well, we have talked about uh, a lot of different things, but is there anything that we haven't covered that you would like to bring up at this point? Oh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I hope everyone is, you know, staying safe and um, staying indoors. And I know it's rough on everyone, but 
this is a perfect time to read a bunch of books. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, random question. How, how's the toilet paper situation in Scotland? <laughs> it's gone. And it's not just that it's weird. So, so there too, huh? Yeah. So my husband and I are, are quite frugal. So we'll, we'll typically buy things in bulk anyway. So we had bulk bought toilet paper. So we're fine. But just out of curiosity, whenever we go to the store, we just check to see. And it, yeah, it's empty. It's, it's not just yeah. that. It's like uh, uh, paper towels or so paper rolls here are gone. Um, Kleenexes, like any sort of paper mm-hmm. product seems to be gone, which is just yep. bizarre. But they don't seem to be as buy happy as in America. Um they, I mean, they are. There's still panic buying going on here in general, but it doesn't seem as bad as the American side of things. It seems like America, it's it's, it's a bit worse. Um, but yeah, so yeah, yeah, we we've got plenty of toilet paper though, um, so we're good oh. there. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it'll last us a while. That's right. That's right. Well, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. I know it's evening for you where uh, in Scotland. Um, so thank you so much for talking to me about your book, Dead Remnants. No worries. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you once again to Armarna uh, for taking the time to talk to me about her book and for putting up with my silly questions about toilet paper. I'm not really obsessed. It's just kind of strange that this is what we keep talking about so much in the world. And, and then I keep talking about it as well. At any rate, thank you to Armarna. Thank you as always to you, my listeners. I so very much appreciate you. And I'm glad that we get to spend this time together every week. If you are a fan of the podcast, I would love it if you could go ahead and give us a nice review, whether a written or five star, that would be awesome. Please do follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And speaking of social media, as I said at the beginning, I do have copies of this book to give away. So if you want to have a chance to win a copy of Dead Remnants and you really do want that chance, then I'm going to have you do the same thing that you did last time which is to tell me about a choice that you've made recently due to your physical distancing or your isolation. Because while not a, not quite as um, prevalent as the book that we spoke about on Friday, which was The Friar's Lantern, Dead Remnant does have a lot to do with choice and the choices that we make in the book. So we're going to stick with that choice and I'm going to actually combine those giveaways so you have a chance to win both of those books. So definitely check out GSMC Book Review Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and look for that giveaway. In this case, I'm going to do a separate post with both books for the giveaway just to mix things up this week because why not? The times are strange anyway. Thank you. As always, please be safe. Please stay home. We are working on flattening that curve. So please stay home and get lost in a good book. The world will thank you for it. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from Movie to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.